Hi guys, welcome back to another tech video. In this video, we will talk about the FaceTime app for Mac OS. If you're new here and haven't followed this Facebook page or subscribed to our YouTube channel, don't forget to tap the follow button on Facebook and or the subscribe button on our YouTube channel to see more MCPL content. We bring you interesting tech videos every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Today's video is the last in the small mini series within the MacBook Pro Basics series about special topic videos that cover specific apps that you'll find on your MacBook. We started with Apple Music, moved on to AirDrop, then iMovie and QuickTime Player, and now we're rounding it out with FaceTime, the video chatting app for Apple. So let's get started. FaceTime is the video and audio calling app that makes it easy to communicate with the people in your life. You can even ask Siri to make a FaceTime call, telling her to FaceTime John or FaceTime audio with your friend Lisa. So calling loved ones, friends, meeting with coworkers, attending classes, getting specialist medical assistance, attending remote therapy sessions, or seeing someone new for the first time are just a few of the many ways that apps like FaceTime, Zoom, Google Duo, Line, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, and so on can defy the constraints of distance to make communication and connection possible no matter where the caller and receiver are located. Now to use FaceTime on your Mac, you do need a few things. A broadband internet connection, a built-in or connected microphone, a built-in or connected camera, and most importantly, your Apple ID, username, and password. It'll also be helpful to know the contact details for the person or people that you're wanting to call. So if your Apple ID is the same one that you're using on your iOS device, it's easy to look up contacts that you've saved there. So with the same Apple ID, with your Mac and iPhone on the same Wi-Fi network, and FaceTime turned on in iCloud, and Wi-Fi calling toggled on in your smartphone device settings, you can even take and make calls using your Mac that come through on your iPhone. Those are just the requirements on your end. So if someone wants to call, wants you to call them using FaceTime, the person that you're making a FaceTime video or audio call to must be signed into FaceTime and have any of the following. A Mac with operating system 10.9.2 or later and a built-in connected microphone or an iOS device with iOS 7 or later or an iPad OS device. Now all of these requirements are ones that you can confirm in your Apple menu options for about this Mac and in system preferences. Setting these details up before you start your call will help make the task a bit easier. To open FaceTime, you can either open it from the dock, from Launchpad, or the Applications folder. FaceTime will be the green app with the white camera in the center. Now before you dive into making a call, Look around the app to see where things are because you'll have more options that'll pop up when you're actually in a call and that can be even more confusing in the moment. So when you're not in a call, this is what FaceTime looks like. Let's start with the menu before moving on to the FaceTime app window. You have FaceTime, Edit, Video, Window, and Help in your menu bar. Since Edit, Window, and Help rarely change between apps, we can focus on a few more of the options that are in the FaceTime and Video menus. So in FaceTime, you'll access the Preferences option to change default options for using FaceTime. You'll see options such as the email addresses and phone numbers that other people can use to call you in FaceTime, Automatic Prominence, which is a feature where in grouped FaceTime calls, the tile of the person speaking becomes larger. And you'll see a list of options for setting up your call number, ringtone, location, and choosing the default app to start your calls from, whether it be FaceTime, Microsoft, Teams, or Zoom. In video, this is where you can select the camera and microphone you need to use in to be heard and seen by other people that you're calling. You can also enlarge the FaceTime window to be full screen or landscape. Now, in the video window, You'll see your red, yellow, and green window managers and a section for all and missed. All is the call log for all of the FaceTime calls that you'll make, receive, or miss. Missed calls, like the one that we have here, will appear in red and can be filtered by clicking the Missed tab at the top of the call log panel. 
just below these tabs is the dial field. So this is where you can enter a name, email, or number of the person or people you're trying to call. So in this field, I can add up to 32 names. You can make a FaceTime call to one or more people who have Mac, iOS device, or iPad OS devices that meet the requirements that we talked about just a moment ago. You can also make a phone call to anyone right from your Mac using the cellular connection of your nearby iPhone, but we won't be doing that. Now when you add a contact, the buttons for audio or video light up. To start the FaceTime call, you can click the video button or the audio button, or use your touch bar. If you click the audio button and you're set up to make phone calls on your Mac, the camera is automatically off. Once you're on a call, you can change your view of the call, pause it, mute, or change the volume of the call, or add more people to the FaceTime call. Now if you make a video call that's declined or unanswered, you can click the message button to send the person an iMessage, but both of you need to be signed in to iMessage. So the same will apply if that you decline or miss a FaceTime call. For calls that you decline, you can send a message to the person while it's ringing to let them know why you're about to decline their call. Now when you're in FaceTime, you can click the buttons that appear across the bottom of the call window. You can click the sidebar button to pop out the information panel. And in here, you can even add a person to the call, mute your microphone, end the call, turn off your camera, and change the standard window size. And that's really all there is to making a call. Once you see your favorite people, you can now chat them up while you work as you keep the FaceTime window on top of all your other windows or toggle it into split screen. You can also minimize the FaceTime window since the call will stay connected. The other person can still hear and speak to you, but we'll see a paused window when, until you bring that window back into view. Now across from your call and video options is a shutter button for taking live photos. When you turn on the allow live photos to be captured during video calls in the FaceTime preferences, you're also allowing others to take live photos of you too. The Photos app doesn't need to be open when you capture a live photo, but you need to have opened it at least once to store a photo in the library. A notification tells you that you took a live photo. The photo is available in your Photos app. Now if you're on a group call, what you'll do instead of clicking the shutter button is you'll double click on the tile of the person that you want to take a photo of. If you want to make plans for a group call that's a mix of iOS and Android users, you also have that option. With FaceTime links in iOS 15 and macOS Monterey, anyone can join a FaceTime call from their browser. Since I don't have those updates, I can tell you what Android users need in order to join your call. They need an Android or Windows device, a strong Wi-Fi or cellular internet connection, the latest version of Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge, and a link. Now, Apple users using the latest versions of iOS and macOS can create a special link and share it with those who are invited. When others open the FaceTime link and click join, they need to be let into the call. So you're going to think of it as the same process as joining a Zoom or Microsoft Teams meeting. They'll wait in the waiting room, the virtual waiting room, until you click to allow them to join. And that's all there is to it. So once you're finished, you'll tap the red end call button in the center and you're all done. So that's FaceTime, the video and audio calling app that makes it easy to communicate with the people in your life. I hope this video helped you learn how to open and use FaceTime app on your MacBook. Have a great day. And we want to thank you for watching. Follow us to find more videos just like this. Our page on Facebook is MCPL360. We're here every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if you miss us on Facebook, you'll still find these same videos on our YouTube channel at MCPLMO. Find our consumer technology playlist. Have a good day.